Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you exactly how to get your bow from the ground up to your stand with no hassle at all and absolutely no noise. Stay tuned. All deer hunters need a really great, efficient way to get their weapon from the ground up to their stand. That's a no-brainer. I use a simple, affordable method that takes all of the frustration away from that process. All you need is paracord. And it certainly doesn't look like this when I go into the woods. But guess what? If you use anything more than this, you're wasting your time, you're wasting your efforts. No winding up dog retrieval thing that clips on your belt that's going to make noise and cost 20 plus dollars. You can buy paracord relatively cheap and all you need is 20 to 30 feet, your desired length. Cut it off and then you can use the rest of it for whatever else you need. And since you're only using paracord, you don't need a gear tie. That's not necessary, even though they are nice. You don't need any metal clips and you certainly don't need any carabiners. They're just going to make noise. So take your clip, leave it at home. Take your carabiner, leave it at home. Your gear tie, use it for something else. Leave that at home or in the car. You don't need that stuff. All you need is paracord. I'm going to show you exactly why. You're thinking, oh, this guy's crazy. Everybody uses paracord. Yeah, most hunters do use paracord, but they're not doing it properly. Most hunters use a clip. That's going to create noise. That's eventually going to wear away. It could rust. The spring might break. Then it's useless. You don't need it. This is what I do. Measure and cut the desired length of paracord. If you hunt at 20 feet normally, cut it at 25. If you hunt at 25 feet, Cut it at 30. The extra five feet is really going to help you out someday. On one end of the paracord, it doesn't matter which end at this point, tie an overhand knot that goes onto your saddle or your pocket or your backpack or your belt loop or your belt or your stand. Something where the paracord is going to be tied on permanently throughout the entire season and beyond. What I do, being a saddle hunter, is I tie it onto a loop onto my saddle. But if I wasn't a saddle hunter, I'd probably tie it onto my stand. Tie it somewhere where it's always going to be and it's not going to go anywhere because this knot will never need to be undone. So what I do is I tie it to this loop on my saddle. It stays here. It's directly behind me. It's always going to be on there and I never have any reason to take the knot out. On the other end, this would be the end that attaches to your bow or your rifle or whatever you use you need to create a very basic slip knot and I'll teach you that right now. Take the end that you're going to attach to your weapon. Create a loop like this. That's all I did was I created a loop, I turned it around, and I kept it like this. There's a tag end sticking out here. Take this part right here, make it like the letter N or an upside down U, stick it through your loop that you just created, grab the tag end and the regular end of the rope and pull it tight. When you have something like this, it tightens up automatically right here and it's so much more effective and it doesn't make any noise and it doesn't add any weight and it doesn't cost anything. Now you need to find a way to put the slip knot onto your weapon. Since I bow hunt most of the time, I'll use my bow as a demonstration for how I take the slip knot and put it onto here. So with your slip knot, all you need to do, place it in between the limb. You'll notice that there's space here in between the limb. I bring it down this way and then you've got your stabilizer here. It goes around there. I pull up this way and it works very, very well because now it's not gonna tilt back and forth this way because the rope is between the limb and and you have this slip knot on the stabilizer down here at this point. So it's gonna keep it standing straight up and down. It's not gonna wobble back and forth. It's not gonna be swinging into the tree or on your steps or anything like that. So the next step is how do you keep your rope from tangling and becoming in a knot. Most hunters just wind it up, shove it in their pocket, hope it works out. It's not a good method, especially when your hands are cold or it's dark outside. So you take one hand, below this hand is all of the rope and that should be down toward the ground. You take your other hand and spread it out as wide as you possibly can. All you have to do is use a figure eight pattern using your thumb and your pinky. So slip it through like this. And this is very easy to do. At first I was very slow. I was like going like this. I was only using the hand with the rope in it. The excess rope. I was going like that. But then you develop some coordination and a technique that works quite well and you can even do this without looking. Now once I'm up at stand height, leaning back into my saddle, I don't even think about it. I just wind up the rope super fast. Don't think about it. It goes back into my hauler when I'm done. So here's what I do. I hold it up like this. I go back and forth. And before you know it, you're going to have 30, 35, 20, whatever, however many feet of rope you have out in front of you back into your hand. And then you have about a foot of this rope left, like this, maybe a little less. What I do is I take that, I have it bunched like that, I wrap it around one time, and this is what goes into my sys hauler, which is attached to my saddle. But if you don't have something like that, you can use a coat pocket, you can use a backpack, you can use a pocket on your pants, you can use something that's attached to your stand, anything you have, anything that can hold rope like this, 
that's going to be a really great way to store it while you're hunting. Then when you're done hunting and it's time to put your bow back down, all you have to do is drop this. And it's tangled free. When it goes down, it's going to completely unravel and it's going to be 100% knot free. So when I bring this up this way, you'll see that there's not one knot, not one issue with this. It's exactly how it's supposed to be. So you lift it back up and now you're ready to attach the slip knot back on the bow to send down the tree, hassle free. There's no extra weight, no extra money spent, no extra noise that is not necessary. You've got everything set up. I don't see the downside of using this method and I consider it the best method to use for getting your bow from the base of the tree up to your stand and making sure that you have a successful hunt. All these little details matter. What separates average hunters from good hunters to great hunters are going through these little tiny things and making sure that these extra measures and all these little things are tweaked and all these little processes are perfected because the last thing you want is a big mess in your stand. The first thing you want is a peace of mind knowing that you're doing things right and having a successful hunt. If you're wondering where I am right now, this is my garage and I'm in here because the weather outside is nasty. It's in between rain and snow. It's slushy. It's a little windy. It's cold, temperatures dropping. It's just not a good way to shoot a video. What I'm showing you today is all about making sure that your method of getting your weapon up to your stand, I'm trying to emphasize how important that is and how overlooked it is by many hunters. Don't let that portion of your hunt be overlooked. It's a crucial part of the process. It's not something that should be overlooked. Getting your weapon from the ground up to your tree is a huge deal and it's a very important part of the entire hunting process. Without that part of the process, most people wouldn't kill deer. So I really hope you appreciate the information I'm sharing with you right now. If you have some other way of getting your weapon up to your stand, let me know. Put that down in the comments. I'd love to hear it. There's a million different ways to do things. Take care. Thanks for watching and thank you for supporting this channel. I'm really blessed to have the support I've had so far. I'm really blessed to see where this channel is going. I can't wait to look a year from now, two years from now, to see how it's grown and to see the support that you guys have given me. So thank you so much for doing that. I appreciate it. Till next time, take care. Bye-bye.